Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will discuss about the methods to improve power factor. So, what are the methods uh, for improving the power factor? Uh, there are three methods. First of all, we will discuss about why should we increase the power factor. Actually, I will uh, tell you about the clear clarification about the power factor. We know that the power factor is the cosine angle between the voltage and current. So actually we will know about the complete all powers. So actually we have the three powers. Real power, reactive power, apparent power. Real power, reactive power, apparent power. There are three powers. So I will tell you clearly about these three powers. Actually, the real power means, so from uh, from this example, please observe this diagram. From this example, real power means the real quantity. Reactive power means the wasted quantity. Complete KVA, this is apparent power. This is apparent power that is indicated by S. Apparent power means the algebraic sum of the reactive power and the real power. So, see here from this triangle, this is the power triangle. Power in the power triangle, this is real power indicated by P, this is reactive power indicated by Q. The combination of, I mean the algebraic sum of these two vectors is called apparent power that is S. From this triangle also we can write the power factor. Power factor is equal to, power factor means the this is angle theta for example, then power factor means cosine angle, cos theta. Apply the cos angle, cos uh, apply the cosine to this triangle. Then the cos pi, I mean cos theta is equal to real power divided by apparent power. Now the real power means kilowatts divided by apparent power means the algebraic sum of these two vectors. So these two vectors means the square root of kW square plus kVr square is equal to kVr square is equal to kVa. So this is the power factor formula. So now we are paying the bill, we are paying the uh, money to the combination of these two electricities. So this is usable electricity, this is wasted electricity. If we decrease this wasted electricity, then we pay the what, uh, what is the useful power th um, that can be paid the amount. So now we are paying the combination of these two powers. So we need to decrease this wasted power, then we, we would pay the amount to the useful power. So that is the our aim. So to decrease this reactive power, what should what are the methods? So to decrease this, met, this reactive power, there are three methods. Those are static capacitor method, synchronous condenser method, phase advanced method. So what should happen when the reactive power will be decreased? So please come to this formula. This in this formula KVAR means the reactive power. So when the reactive power will be decreased to the zero, I mean this is completely eliminated by the some of the methods we are we will uh, we are using. So by this by these any one of the method we will decrease the reactive component to zero. Then what happens? This term will be zero. When the when it is zero, square and root will be cancelled then kw by kw by will be cancelled then it will be is equal to 1 it means power factor will be equal to 1 power factor is unity power factor is unity means come to the back side from the back side power factor unity means the reactive component is 0 can you understand this point so reactive power uh, 0 means the power factor will be unity so at the same time vice versa power factor unity means reactive component will be zero so we should maintain the power factor to the unity or at least approximately equal to the unity then it will be satisfied it means we need to eliminate this reactive power at least approximately equal to the zero so for that purpose we are using the three methods it means indirectly i am saying the main heading is the power factor improvement methods, but indirectly I am saying the methods to decrease the reactive power component. Okay, can you understand this point? Okay, now we will we'll go to the first method, static capacitor method. How should we decrease the reactive component in this method? 
in the static capacitor method first of all in the static capacitor method we simply use the capacitor in parallel to the load why we use this capacitor first of all in uh, please observe this diagram first diagram in this the load is inductive component okay for the inductive loads it takes the uh, lagging current so for inductive loads those are taking the lagging current lagging uh, lagging current means it is a reactive component so for this purpose we need to eliminate this lagging reactive component so this is the lagging current so to eliminate this lagging current we should add the leading current so by adding the capacitor in parallel to the load then this is the leading component this is the lagging component so both are will be neutralized then the power factor should be improved so it is clearly shown from the phasor diagram so uh, i will tell you clearly don't worry in this load without capacitor i mean without static capacitor what happens the current i voltage v is like this x axis current i with the angle phi 1 okay this is the angle phi 1 this is more because of the reactive component that is inductive load so we should decrease this angle we should decrease this angle by decreasing this angle cos angle cos angle means if we decrease this to zero then cos zero is equal to 1 unity power factor so that is better so but we cannot uh, decrease this up to zero so at least we can decrease as as much as possible so how we will decrease when we add the capacitor in parallel to the load this is the lagging co leading component so from this current the co uh, combination of these two currents parallel uh, these are in parallel connection right so Uh, total current is equal to the sum of the these two currents that is vector sum ic is like this one i means this is like this so the combination of algebra sum of the ic and i should be i dash that is the total current okay so what happens angle before uh, the capacitor before adding the capacitor angle is phi 1 now when we we'll add the capacitor the angle is phi 2 compared to the phi 1 phi 2 is less so it is decreased when the angle should be, when the angle is decreased it means the power factor will be increased okay cos phi cos phi this is phi is equal to okay phi decreases means the cos phi is increasing so when the phi will zero then the result will be 1 so we main we try to maintain the power factor should be 1 but we cannot reach the unity so by this method we can eliminate or neutralize the lagging component from the inductive component inductive component okay what are the advantages by using this capacitor method so by using this static capacitor method in this method there are low losses low losses in this method and it has low maintenance low losses in this method and low maintenance and it do not require the foundation for installation of these capacitors no need to uh, maintain the foundation and these are the weight in the uh, less weight so these are easy to easy to install these are the advantages by using this method coming to the disadvantages the age of the capacitor bank is less that means 8 to 10 years only so the age of the capacitor these capacitors uh, capacitor bank means the combination of capacitors in the parallel or series connection or delta or star connection now second advantage disadvantage is if the radiator voltage increases then it causes to damage it means capacitor so if the radiator voltage increases beyond the radiator voltage then the capacitor should be maybe damaged next coming to the last one once capacitor spoiled then repairing is costly so repairing is costly so that it is it comes under the disadvantages so these are the disadvantages for the first method that is static capacitor method it it is very easy so there is nothing in this method so just we are using just simply a capacitor is connected in parallel to the load that's it now coming to the second method synchronous condenser method synchronous condenser method is similar to the first method okay before going to that uh, uh, operation so we will know what is synchronous condenser 
synchronous condenser means when a synchronous motor operates at no load or over excited then it is called synchronous condenser okay so this synchronous condenser is to provide the leading current like the previous method previous method capacitor is used to provide the leading current because the lagging currents will occur from the inductive components so those are eliminated or decreased by the leading component so this leading currents will be occurred from the capacitor or synchronous condenser so in this method we are using capacitor for increasing the leading current and here for the leading currents we are using synchronous condensers okay this leading current will be provided by over exciting the synchronous motor okay so when the synchronous motor when the synchronous motor is over excited over excited then it will acts as a synchronous condenser right so coming to this diagram this is the three phase load okay this three phase load carries the current il that is inductive current so this is the il this is voltage the angle between the voltage and current is phi l that is more so we need to decrease this angle then power flow will be improved so to decrease this angle we have to connect this synchronous condenser synchronous condenser means simply synchronous motor but this motor will operated or runs under the over excited condition so this motor carries the current im this is the leading current leading current means like this so these are both are in parallel connection parallel con combination so total current will be the sum of the im and il so phasor sum im and il is equal to the resultant current total current i so now the volt um, angle between the voltage and current will be phi that is less compared to the previous one so previous angle phi l is more compared to present phi so then the power factor will be improved this is the one of the method to decrease the power factor sorry to increase the power factor in this method it draws the leading current and eliminates the reactive component when synchronous condenser is connected in parallel to the supply see here this is connected in parallel to the load so these are these methods are used to improve the power factor in large industries because of the rotating machinery okay now coming to the advantages these are almost Uh, gives long life is approximately 25 years and it has high reliability and it requires low maintenance and the faults can be removed easily in this method these are the some of the more advantages in this synchronous condenser method coming to the disadvantages it produces noise because it is a rotating pod so definitely there will be a noise it is expensive because it is a machine so it will cost highly okay these are the advantages and disadvantages of uh, synchronous condenser method this is also one of the method and uh, by comparing these two methods in this method a simple capacitor is connected in parallel to the load but in this method a synchronous motor i mean it is a synchronous condenser connected in parallel to the load okay for uh, small appliances uh, uh, we are using uh, the capacitor for the large industries we need to use this synchronous condenser method okay now coming to the last one phase advanced method this is the third one this is also a uh, method to improve the power factor it is also used in industries because of induction motors so this is used for mainly to improve the power factor in induction motors okay it is simply it is a simple ac exciter okay i will tell you clearly there is a supply connected to the induction motors okay in the induction motors there is a stator and rotor this stator carries a lagging currents this stator has a inductive coil so it carries lagging current so from by this lagging current the power factor should be reduced so to improve this power factor we need to connect an ac exciter that is called phase advancer this this is a simple ac exciter so another extra supply only so this supply is connected in parallel to the induction motor then this phase advancer is provide the leading co leading component to the induction motor then the lagging currents and the uh, leading currents will be cancelled each other then the power factor will be improved 
slightly so this is one of the method this is also a similar to the previous methods okay phase advancement means this is a separate excitation separate ac excitation only now coming to the advantages there is a single advantage the phase advancer can be easily used all used disadvantage is is it is not economical for motors below 200 hp so this is used to improve the power factor of induction motor in industries only okay this is one of the method to improve the power factor these are the main three methods to improve power factor i think i hope you understand the concept of methods for improving power factor <laughs>